when the hospital came to me at 435 pounds and said he was getting fatter and not stronger, I already knew what I was going to see. When we did the blood test, of course, we discovered that he was high blood sugar, high blood pressure. He had fatty liver disease. He had metabolic syndrome. Haftel Bjornsson, man. What does this guy eat? He's 6'9", he's anywhere from 400 to 450 pounds. He was a 2018 World's Strongest Man. He, of course, starred as the mountain in HBO's Game of Thrones. I watched him compete myself at this year's World's Strongest Man. I've written dozens of articles about him, and by far the most common question that I hear is what does this monstrous human being consume to not only maintain his hundreds of pounds of muscle, but also to fuel his world-class workouts that he completes every single week. I, for one reason, to get some this year. This is Nick at barbend.com, and today I've got the very special guest, the absolutely legendary Stan Efferding, who is the nutrition coach not only for Hafthor Bjornsson, but also his rival, four-time World's Strongest Man winner, Brian Shaw. The two compete against one another, but they have the same nutrition coach. Now, Stan is an IFBB pro bodybuilder. He's also a powerlifter. He's totaled over 2,300 pounds raw. And he's the creator of the diet that gives Hafthor Bjornsson 8,000 to 10,000 calories of food every single day. And that diet is called the vertical diet. So today, Stan is gonna walk us through what Thor eats, what he doesn't eat and why, the adjustments he made to fix his liver, help his blood pressure, and above all, improve his digestion. Because when you are eating that many calories, you need to stay hungry and not feel bloated or you are just not going to make it to the 8,000 calorie daily goal. Now, I do need to make it very clear that this is not medical advice. Stan's gonna talk a lot about stuff he did to fix Thor's liver and fix his thyroid, fix his digestion, all that kind of stuff. If those are concerns for you, absolutely make sure you speak to your physician first. Don't listen to this advice here. But let's get started. How does Stan approach food? Whether I'm working with a 450 pound Hofgård Bjornsson or I'm working with a 97 pound professional ballet dancer for the Sacramento Ballet, the the biochemistry is the same. The physiology is the same. They have the same nutritional demands. Uh, they just differ in, in total caloric intake. There's some other minor things that I focus on with respect to whether or not they're gaining or losing weight. But essentially, I'm trying to make sure that they're not uh, either A, creating micronutrient deficiencies when they're dieting. We know that is metabolic adaptation. Uh, or B, uh, suffering from metabolic syndrome because they're eating a lot of the wrong foods and ending up with fatty liver disease and insulin resistance. So as far as macronutrients go, on the vertical diet, you're gonna be getting a gram of protein per pound of body weight, at least 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight, and you're gonna fill the rest of your calories from carbohydrates. And in Thor's case, that's well over a thousand grams of carbohydrates. Stan says that he gets a good 5,000 or so calories from carbohydrates alone. But you don't get to just fill those macronutrients with whatever. This is not an if it fits your macros diet. There are very specific foods that Stan recommends and he has very specific reasons for recommending them. So here's the ideal way to make up your macronutrients according to efforting. Most of your protein comes from red meat, as well as some from whole eggs, fatty fish, that sort of thing. The vast majority of your carbohydrates come from white rice because it's low in fiber and very easy to digest. And your micronutrients come mostly from whole fruit and certain vegetables, especially spinach and red peppers. Now Stan, as far as micronutrients goes, he really emphasizes choline for liver health. Eggs are a pretty good source of that. Calcium for blood pressure, he recommends whole milk. Magnesium from vegetables, that's to help with recovery, stress reduction, sleep quality, that sort of thing. And also the electrolytes, sodium and potassium to help with hydration and energy production. Stan is really well known for heavily emphasizing sodium for his athletes. Athletes sweat a lot. You really don't wanna skimp on salt if you're having a lot of tough workouts. But what aren't you eating? Now, this depends on how much you get and how it's prepared, but generally speaking, Thor limits a lot of foods that are traditionally eaten by athletes, including oats, bread, brown rice, even a lot of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. Why? It's not that I say that the foods are good or bad inherently. Uh, I look at things in terms of a good, better, best scenario. And it's been my experience personally and with the athletes that I deal with, the digestion is the first thing uh, that we need to address. You're not just what you eat, you're what you can digest and absorb. And <clears throat> on both ends of the spectrum, it can be those kinds of foods uh, we call high FODMAP foods, fermentable oligodye, monosaccharides, foods that uh, end up being indigestible and get into the large intestine and, and broken down by 
uh, bacteria and create a lot of methane and gas and bloating. Now this approach isn't all that new. These foods contain what are called FODMAPs, which stands for fermentable oligodimonosaccharides and polyols. These are types of carbohydrates that are often limited among people who have like irritable bowel syndrome because it can cause digestive upset, indigestion, gas, bloating, those sorts of symptoms. And when you're eating as many calories as Thor Bjornsson is, little digestive hiccups that might go unnoticed at 2,000 calories can be magnified at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12,000 calories. At least that's Stan Efferding's theory. When he started working with Thor, he said that he had high blood pressure, high blood sugar, fatty liver disease, metabolic syndrome, and a bunch of other issues. So what happened when they started working together? So initially, of course, you have to diet them down. You gotta take 30 pounds off of an athlete uh, to, to fix the fatty liver syndrome. Uh, get choline, get uh, B12, get folate into their system so the liver can fix itself. It just needs the right nutrients. It's not done with a, a celery cleanse. That's not how you fix fatty liver disease. Uh, you, you diet away some of the fat and then you provide the micronutrients necessary so the liver can be healthy. And then we're able to, to bring him back up. Uh, I took him down to 395 and then back up to over 450. And he went from having uh, a pre-diabetic uh, you know, HA1C of about 5.8, we brought him down to about 5.1 at 395. And then when we took him back up to 450 pounds, we did so without the pizza pasta and pancakes. And we kept the whole eggs in because that's the choline that's necessary for the liver. And we kept a lot of B12 in, that was the red meat. Uh, and we kept, uh, we got plenty of folate into his diet. So, uh, and then we used mostly white rice. After we got adequate potassium, we supplemented magnesium and D3. We built him up. Uh, we got his one gram per pound or a little less in terms of protein. Uh, his fats were about 0.4 grams per pound. And that was really just for general health. And they were in the foods that he ate. We didn't have to supplement any, any specific fats. Uh, that are generally in the meats and the eggs and the dairy. And then we drove white rice primarily uh, to, to about 1,200 grams a day, nearly four or 5,000 calories a day of white rice. Tonight, you can have some rice. I eat a lot of rice every day. Recently, Thor put up a video of what he eats in a day. Here's what most of his six meals look like. Meal number five. Meal number five. What do we got? We got ribeye burgers. Rice with spinach and carrots. I'm feeling hungry. Now a couple of his meals had potatoes, some had some whole fruit thrown in. He also had about a liter of coconut water throughout the day to help with potassium intake, which is like really important for him. But that's the basis of his diet. Almost every meal just worked up a template of red meat, white rice, low FODMAP vegetables, and some juice or coconut water. A couple of things worth emphasizing here, the dextrose there that got sprinkled on his rice, that's a carbohydrate that's meant to help you stimulate amylase production, which is a digestive enzyme that helps to break down carbohydrates. And then of course there's the fruit juice, which like the white rice, it's just a low fiber source of carbohydrates that's pretty easy to digest and doesn't make you feel too full. Your, your thyroid gets suppressed by over restriction, but it also can get suppressed by overeating. And so we have to keep their, their appetite stimulated. That was another reason for the fruit. Uh, I use actually fruit juice in small amounts frequently throughout the day, three or four ounces, three to four times a day. Of course, we're eating six meals a day. And that increases body temperature and stimulates the liver where you know 80% of thyroid is converted from the inactive T4 into the active T3. And they're just hungrier as you know, the, the most applicable sense is that they're just hungry. They're able to eat more, digest it faster, and eat again you know, sooner so they can get all their calories in. But these are the reasons that I'm pretty specific about the foods that I recommend because they provide so many different positives. And then the foods that I avoid, uh, you know, I have a specific reason for that. And I'm not trying to be a zealot about those foods or claim that they're bad for you. Lastly, let's talk supplements. What does Efferding recommend on his vertical diet? I don't recommend a lot of supplements. Vitamin D3 is hard to get from food. Magnesium is hard to get from food. So I usually supplement those. If somebody has high liver enzymes, AST, ALT enzymes from a blood test, then I, I, I start with the fruit, and this is mainly for large athletes using oral performance enhancing drugs who lose their appetite as a result. Once the liver feels like you're poisoning it, it'll shut your appetite down. 
And so I'll introduce some fruit that tends to bring ASP ALT down. It tends to help the liver. If that's not significant enough, then uh, two products, Tudka, T-U-D-C-A, which I'll try not to pronounce the actual scientific name, and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Those two taken in conjunction can have dramatic effects on ASP ALT. They can bring it down from over 100 to under 40 within 30 days and uh, reestablish your appetite within a matter of a week. And that becomes really important when I'm dealing with, uh, you know, big power lifters and strong men and the like who, uh, who may suffer from appetite problems as a result of, uh, you know, an elevated liver enzyme. Despite his big emphasis on digestive health, Stan actually does not recommend probiotic bacteria or digestive enzyme supplements because he just doesn't really think there's enough evidence to recommend them at this stage. But interestingly enough, he does sometimes find himself recommending pills of hydrochloric acid. He recommends like one to three capsules with every meal for people who may have low acid or people who have been taking antacids because when you're low in acid, your stomach is not breaking down food as well as it probably could. So. Hydrochloric acid pills could possibly be worth checking out, but again, this is not medical advice. So that's Philip Johnson's diet. The take home message here is if you're eating many times more the amount of calories than the average person consumes, you wanna do everything you can to minimize indigestion and bloating and keep your appetite high. And Stan Everding's theory is if you do minimize high fiber foods and FODMAPs, the kinds of foods that people with IBS often avoid, that could potentially help you ameliorate these issues. But again, I need to emphasize, if you're having any issues with your diet, or you wanna change your diet, make sure you speak to a physician before making any big changes like that. I really wanna thank Stan Everding for coming onto the show today and make sure you subscribe as well because we've got a ton more nutrition content and product reviews coming up.